Yeah. All, right. Yeah. All right. So, how's it been going, Cody? Good, good. How about for you guys? Uh, not too bad. Can't can't complain. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good. That's been pretty good. Good deal. To, yeah. Uh, well, a few how weeks was, ago. How was that show? Good. How was that? No. No. Oh. Show um, uh, last show went show went really really good last week uh, with mm-hmm. Travis. Uh, we we had uh, a few little little legs with him, but I think we're trying to get that under control now. I just think it's where whatever rooms we're in. I think that's kind of freezing us up a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, cool. I yeah, yeah, yeah. That I yeah, I was seeing some of my reviews from the MAW show, and it it looked pretty good. So with bridge and yeah, looked like a big event. So yeah, who who they run for the main event on that show? Uh, who was it again? Get out. Yeah, you know, Justin. Yeah. Um, for what? M-A-W, we're from this past weekend? Yeah. 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 I I think it was the system and whoever, uh, I think it was the system and Wild Pete were the main event. Oh, okay. I think the system won. Mm -hmm. It sounds about right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's the system, man. He's always a winner. So, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. cool. Yeah. Last last night I was up at um, up at the Rick Bronson uh, Comedy Club uh, watching hey. Mick Foley. Hey, John Johnson oh. took our wives up there last night. So um, that was a nice little show. Have you guys ever seen him? Uh, seen his show live? Uh, no, I haven't. I never seen. Never seen Mick Foley live yet. But I yeah, he's an interesting cat. Yeah, he's an interesting <laughs> cat. That's for sure. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I was able to be on uh, be on a, a couple of shows with uh, with his uh, buddy Terry Funk, and um, got to share a locker room with just Terry Funk and uh, Honky Tonk Man. It was Honky Tonk Man, and, uh, myself, and Terry Funk, and uh, wow, pretty pretty darn cool to do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Terry Funk definitely a great name, and it's kind of in. I don't know if he still is wrestling, but I mean, he always, I don't know, he always makes a bunch of returns. So it's kind of right. a crazy. Yeah, you never know. Mm-hmm. He's Terry Funk. So yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, how should we so what start? else are we gonna chat about, boys? <laughs> um. Well, we've had our, our first show, so, I mean, we've kind of uh, well covered a lot of your career, so I thought that would be a good idea just to uh, add in some uh, some stuff that we didn't cover and then uh, talk about, Jesse had mentioned, like, family life and life after wrestling, so, yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. I'll go um, first. I, I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, one question I didn't ask last time was, uh, was there a character difference between Cody on you? O'Neill and Chaos Case Chaos Chaos. chaos. Um, yeah, for the most part, I mean Chaos was the uh the backyard version uh of uh of, of my wrestling character. Um I had to change my name when we went down to uh me myself and Eric Cannon went down to IWA Mid South and worked down there. Um and uh if you guys ever watched XPW, they had a chaos. So uh being that I was working for uh you know an internationally known company um i had to mm-hmm. change my name so uh cody o'neill was always stuck in the back of my mind because of o'neill uh o'neill surf uh surf clothing um i had the long mm-hmm. blonde hair and i figured oh we'll just you know go for shoot for that i didn't really do a surfer gimmick um mm-hmm. you know I, my my character was built from california but i didn't do any kind of surfer gimmick or anything like that but 
Uh, there was a little bit of difference. I mean, the longer I was in the business, obviously, the more comfortable I got uh, being someone that, you know, that I necessarily wasn't. But um, I, even even the Cody O'Neill character was um, it was just myself uh, amplified, you know, by 10. So, yeah, no real differences um, other than that long blonde, all other than that long blonde hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, I know typically it's just like a name change, but I wasn't sure if it sometimes it uh you change something about it. So I was just curious about that. So yeah. Yeah, the only uh, the only real character change that I that I uh did was when, when MPW turned me heel. Um when uh, me and Delgado, uh pretty boy Delgado turned heel. Um that was a little bit different for me because I'd never Never, ever had to work at getting a pop, you know. I was over from uh, right away. Um, so it was uh, it was odd turning heel, man, because I had to work uh, work hard at getting over. And uh, it was not it was not something that came easy right away. Uh, once I figured it out, sure was fun to run heel, man. I loved it. It was, it was fun to work heel, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, some people it's easier and some uh, sometimes it's harder. But it's uh, it's cool how uh, yeah you were able to transition like that. So yeah, uh, all right, uh, Jesse, I'll let you go with the question then. Okay, um, so Cody, what is your uh, brother up to these days? Oh, he froze. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> oh no. Okay. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Cody, I don't know if you if you heard me or not. I, I asked you what what is your brother up to these days? Uh he's working construct he works construction. Um still lives in southern Minnesota, works for the same construction company that he uh worked for uh when I trained him to be in the business. Um, he's been with them for 18, 19 years going. Yeah, close to 20 years. Uh, he, uh, he's actually, a, a, he operates a rock crusher. So oh, nice. Yep. Works for union. He's, yep. He works a lot harder than I do. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all work hard in some aspect of, yeah. of something, but yeah. Uh, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, what were the best company rings that you uh to work in? MPW had the best ring, always had the best ring. Um, other than that, CZW's ring was top notch too. When we went out and worked for CZW out in uh, Philly at the ECW arena, um, that was an mm-hmm. awesome ring. Um, uh, we also I trained, um, oh, I trained Lucha in a ring, um. Whose ring was that? Uh, but it was a shorter ring, you know, like a three footer. Um, that sucker was great. I can't remember whose ring it was. Yeah, it was, that was uh, absolutely fantastic as well. But as far as like locally, uh, MPW always had the best ring. Um, always, 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 always. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, because I know it. Uh, differs and especially when you go from like indies to like a, a WWE. I know I've seen a well, actually, uh, I'll use the example of AEW because when uh, in November when they were doing the AEW dark for the local town, I saw that they uh, well, originally I just saw it as like a, a regular map, but then for Rampage, they switched out the mat or something. So I guess it's just kind of cool. How okay, they so yeah. But then again, indies, they always change stuff. And sometimes it feels more like you're getting pounded in the wood or it's just a little less softer, but it's never super soft as all wrestlers know. So, mm-hmm. not a trampoline. Yeah, the, one of the worst rings I worked in was one of the worst rings I worked in. Uh, Eric Cannon and I, when we went down to Mid South and worked, uh, that ring was actually, it was bowed in the middle. Um, like there was a, 
it was like you're running uphill at at certain points in the ring um and their ropes like i'm not a tall guy by any means but those their, their ropes were i think that top rope sat at probably just over five feet uh five feet tall it came up to probably um if you can see my hand probably almost to my neck um so like hitting that top rope and getting it on over the top wow. rope was I was just we ring to work in. Um, and then we worked in, um, we went out and worked in the courthouse in Mitchell, South Dakota. And uh, they had a, a ring that was almost similar. Um, you would run across it, and it was like a trampoline. It was for, and it was for an NWA TV taping for uh, out of Colorado, NWA Rocky Mountain. Just mm-hmm. a weird ring to work in. Mm-hmm. Just kind of limits what you can do in the rings like that because you don't want to hurt each other. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh, Jesse, I'll let you go with the question. Yeah. So, okay. Um, when you actually retired, did you know that it was over for you? Well, when I originally when I originally hung them up, uh, my the last match I had was at First Ave. Uh, it was me, Aaron Corbin, and my brother against uh, Darren Corbin, Ryan Cruz, and Eric Cannon. Um, I was going to hang him up and be done then. Well, then Danucci, Danucci called my brother and I and uh, uh, offered us uh, pretty good money to work on his shows, uh, which just prolonged, I, I don't know, prolonged me leaving the business by about three years. Um, and then I left the business for five years. Um and got a call from a promoter and, uh, Hey, I want you and your brother to work, um, demolition. So we worked demolition and, um, a one weekend. And then the following weekend, we did a big, uh, match with the misfit John Johnson and in Elk river. And uh, I, I knew after that demolition match that I had one more match and then I was done. Uh, the body just screwed up. Uh, the calluses that you build up, uh, you know, working three, four matches a week um, are invaluable. You need those calluses on your body that bumps. And uh, I lost all those calluses because uh, because I was at home being a dad and uh, being a husband. So, but so yeah. yeah. Long story short, yep. I I knew it was over uh, as soon as I knew I missed that when I was done. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, talk about uh, working with uh, Northern Impact Wrestling. NIW. Mm-hmm. Um, th- those kids were fun to work with. Um, it was fun going there with the MPW guys, you know. Um, and then when uh, when Johnson started uh, Northern Premier. Um, and we did the takeover. Uh, that was even more fun. Um, Andrew Scalzi, the, the the booker over at NIW, um, he he had a pretty good uh, pretty good brain for wrestling. Uh, there was a few guys that on that on those shows that had no business being in a uh, ring um, at all, um, and I still <laughs> still believe that. Um, um, I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't work. Thank God I didn't work the ones that were. Uh, the guys that were terrible. Um, I worked. Um, maybe one of the guys that I worked was was real green and and he was huge, uh, but he didn't want to do anything. He let me lead the match. Um, uh, he was smart about it, so um, I was thankful for that. But like one of the guys that I worked um, there, well, Klecker, Klecker came out. And he was he was actually pretty good, um, but his brother. Uh, Brian, um, I think was his name. I think Brian, I'm buddies with him on Instagram. So if he's listening to this, I apologize. But uh, he and I had an absolutely fantastic match. Great, great worker for not being like legitimately trained. The guy had uh, great timing in the ring and he listened. Um, so yeah, th- those were fun matches back then. Uh, I think Air Cannon and I worked work a bunch for, for uh, Skull Z and um, you know, I got to tag with Aaron over there a couple of times, uh, beat on the kids again. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I'm just looking in the chat right here uh, from John Castro. Uh, mad love and respect, Cody. So. Buddy, yeah, yeah. I, old uh, old Castro. He's he's been around. I think he was around. Correct me if I'm wrong, Castro. But I think Castro was uh, was um, was around longer than uh, longer than me. Uh, I think he was uh, he was going to the MPW camp um, when I when I had my tryout. I think he had already been there um, before I got there. So uh, Castro and I have known each other for oh, 20 years now. So he's a good dude, man. He's uh, if you want to talk about paying, paying your dues. That that guy has done everything in the business and uh, and uh, just. Does, shows up and does what needs to be done. You know, uh, set up a ring, tear down a ring. He'll ref. Um, he's uh, he's good, folks. He's uh, he's good for the business. That guy, that's for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of funny. Uh, so we did a, a drawing a few shows ago uh, for uh, a, a couple of Travis Sharp autographs, and he was one of the winners and then I uh, messaged him and then he's like, no, nah, I'm good, man. I'm actually uh, roommates with Travis. <laughs> then he <laughs> sent the picture of some autograph he had. I'm like, yeah, I didn't even know that. It was just kind of funny to, to hear that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 autographs to his, about his roommates. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jesse, I'll let you go with the question. All right, so if you had a, I don't know, let's say an 18, 19 year old kid come up to you and ask you what the best way for them to get into wrestling, what would you tell them? After trying to talk them out and uh, talking out of being in the business, um, <laughs> the, the best, uh, the best advice I could give him is find a legit trainer um, who's not going to take your money and and um, you know not train you. Um, I got lucky, you know, uh, being with MPW and then uh, finding someone like Eric Cannon who was hungry just like me, and uh, we just sat and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. Um, but that's the thing is you don't take your spot on a show for granted. Mm-hmm. Because uh, the the next biggest thing, the next biggest guy, uh, the next popular guy is right around the corner. That there's, I mean, anyone um, in any job is replaceable. But as far as wrestling goes, like I would have never thought that I got popular. But man, back in 03, I was I was popular. Man, I was over. Like like I talked about uh, earlier, um, I didn't even have to try to get over. I don't even, you know, I did a couple of flips off. Folks, and uh, you know, I had a couple of fun high spots, and that got me over. And it's what it is, man. Uh, but it didn't come around in uh, super over. Um, that guy was fun to watch. If you guys ever, if you guys remember him, I know we brought him up last week or in our last uh, chat that we were talking about. Uh, Brandon Bonham, he worked for Gorilla Pro Wrestling out on the coast, and and that, but. Um, God, he was fun to watch. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's guys standing in line. So I guess the best advice other than don't get in the business would be uh, work out uh, and uh, stand, make your body stand out from, from anyone else's and uh, find something find something unique. You know, I, I was lucky enough to be five foot three and uh, was able to bounce around the ring like no, no one's business. So um, that got me over because, man, I didn't have a whole lot of charisma when I first got business, man. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's an important thing to think about, too, because uh, uh, or the part about uh, making sure you're or well, as a character, be cocky. But like as a like backstage, you're always. You're, there's always uh, someone behind you, so don't like, yeah, don't take your spot for granted. And we have a good example of that is uh, Brian Kendrick, I believe, in his 2009 2010 run. He was talking about how he kind of took his spot for granted, and then he was lucky to come back and to WWE in like 2017 when they did the Cruiserweight Classic and all that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Um. 
Uh, which uh, specific match was your favorite with uh, Eric Cannon? Uh, sorry, we're cutting in and out. What was my favorite match with Eric? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Here, guys. Sorry. There we go. I got you back. Okay. What was yeah, uh, so the question? Was uh, what was my favorite match with Eric Cannon? Uh, yes. Yep. Cutting out again. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, let me think here. We had man uh, the the night we closed down the NPW arena. That last match. That was a pretty fun match, man. I think we went forty eight minutes, something like that. 45, 40, whatever, 45 minutes. Um, that was a fun match. <laughs> Um, you know, you, you work a guy so many times and you become such good friends that you can, uh, you can work a 45 minute match and not have to, uh, really talk at all up in the locker room. Um, as far as, um, timing in the ring with, with anybody, he and I, um, I knew what he was doing before he even did and vice versa. I think, um, God, he was, he's a talented guy, my man. And, um, uh, Yeah. Um, so that match, uh, and then, um, oh, I, our IWA Mid-South match was fun. The CZW match, like, that was super cool. Um, going out to the, uh, an arena like the ECW Arena and um, and not uh, not getting booed out of the building. Uh, <laughs> that's a win in my book. So we got to – and the IW Mid-South, we got to please come back, Chant. So for a crowd like that who is ruthless – uh, I mean, that's a CM Punk trained crowd down there in, in Mid-South. And uh, for them to, uh, you know, watch us for eight to ten minutes and then chant, please come back, that was uh, that was a fun match. But, yeah, I don't think I ever had a bad match with that guy. Um, you know, I you'd have to be a, you'd have to be a sop and wet uh, dog to have a bad match with that guy. But um, we had some fun matches, man. Fun, fun mm-hmm. matches. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Jesse, I'll let you go with the question. All right. So Aaron Corbin has the, has a event coming up in Faribault. Has he talked to you about maybe appearing at that event? <laughs> um, he hasn't. And we hung out, like I mentioned to you guys the other day. Um, I think you and I were texting back and forth, Jesse. I actually yep. hung out with... Uh, well, I hung out with John last night, and then John, um, John, Aaron, and my uh, son and I all went to the uh, Minnesota State High School State Wrestling Tournament Thursday to the dual meet. Uh, those guys are like an uncle to, uncle to my uh, to my kiddo, so they've been around um, since he's been born. So, um, anyways, yeah. uh, he hasn't. Uh, that show debut or the year after it debuted, uh, I was the ring announcer. Oh no! Uh, he hasn't mentioned it at all. Maybe I outpriced myself the, the year I announced. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I have re- really no 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 need no want. And that's I mean that's just right up. The, that's ten minutes from me. Uh, but yeah, I have really no need no want to do it. Um, yeah. But lots of fun guys on that show, though. There's a lot of fun yep. guys on that show. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like a just from the poster, it looked like a pretty good card. So, yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, right now, I want to. I just want to share a clip with you. This is your thoughts on it. It's from a uh, NIW Bound by, by Honor, and it's by that's uh, you face the wrestler that uh, we were just talking about right now. So I just want to uh, let's share the screen right here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking about this? <laughs> oh, funny stuff. God, when Corbin and I play, <laughs> he would always chop me, and I'd be like, God, you, you need to lay him in because he was always, always nice. Like, you see those punches, and he had great punches, but man, they were light. Um, I was a little bit stiffer in the ring than, uh, than uh, your normal little guy. I like, but. I was uh, I wasn't a coward. 
Um, I always like to have guys lay it in. So but, uh, he works nice and light and um, God, it was fun working him. Like ha- half the moves that I, uh, that were in my repertoire, he, he would see on, uh, on videos and be like, Hey, I see. And, uh, and uh, we would, you know, get to the, get to the building lower and, uh, and, um, and work on, you know, high spots for me. Um, yeah. He's a very selfless guy. Like uh, one mm-hmm. of the best jobbers in, in Minnesota has ever seen. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Look at this now. I've, I've never seen a, I've seen Corbin with long hair, but like that, that man bun thing he's got going on right there is kind of interesting <laughs> to see. <laughs> yeah. 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 He started to grow his hair out there for a while. Uh, this, this, uh, this match is actually uh, f- hilarious because we actually leave the building and sh- and and fight into Shim Dogs Explore. We drove uh, we drove about uh, I don't know two miles away, sat at the gas station, um, came back um, right after the match hey. after this and finished this match in the building. It was absolutely hilarious. Um, I don't even know whose idea it was to leave to leave and and have Shimdog take off in his in ex, in ex, is a explore, but probably Aaron's. Mm-hmm. And that's the <laughs> card. I don't even remember this. I don't even remember doing this. It's hilarious. Yeah, what is that? Uh, so yeah, it was uh, it was always fun working this guy. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that since we were talking about uh, Corbin. So yeah. Yep. All right. There we go. All right. Uh, Jesse, I'll let you go with the question. Hey, Daddy. Yeah. Um, so uh, what are your take take on um, high school girls wrestling? Do you, love it. Do you think? Absolutely do, love it. I, I think it's wonderful that they're finally getting a chance to uh, – get out there and do that kind of thing because years ago when you go to amateur matches there wasn't even girls wrestling now did they, they yeah have- it was a, it was a little yeah it was a little taboo back then um you yeah. know when when i when i first got in into uh wrestling in fourth grade uh there was a gal that that wrestled fourth and fifth grade and then she stopped and then we didn't have any girls on the team but um i live in Owatonna, minnesota Otana, Minnesota, which is uh, known for great wrestling. Uh, we just crowned uh, a high school state champ, a girl high school state champ um, this past weekend up there at the Excel Energy Center. So um, pretty darn cool, man. Pretty cool. It's about time. Yep, I, um, I agree 100%. You know, we, um, uh, Corey and I, we freestyled uh, in the office in a folk style. Always, always girls freestyling back then, not to the level that they do it now, man. Like, uh, God, there was um, there's a little gal that wrestles for Anoka um, at 106 pounds. Um, she actually made the boys state tournament um, and was mm-hmm. ranked. I think if she wasn't ranked, if she wasn't ranked in the top 10, um, um, she should have been. Uh, she wrestled with, uh, one of the same Michael kids. Uh, who was ranked, I think, fourth, and gave him a pretty damn good run for his money. Uh, she, he only beat her five nothing in uh, in their dual meet of the state tournament. So, um, and she's just a freshman. So keep an eye on her. I think it's Gabby yeah. um, Gabby something. She's a hundred six pounder up at Anoka. So uh, keep an eye on her if you uh, if you watch and follow amateur wrestling in Minnesota. She's uh, she'll she'll place. Uh, uh, if not next year, her junior year and senior year no. for the boys in the boys bracket. So, yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Um. Uh, how did you come up with the name uh, the Suntan Superman? Uh oh. Sorry. Oh no. I'm back now. What's your question, buddy? Uh, how did you come up with the name, the uh, suntan Superman? 
Stole it from Ron Killings. Oh. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. Aaron was watching. I think it was TNA back then. Yeah. And, uh, oh, that is. and uh, okay. said said Ron Ron's, Ron Killings uh, called himself the Santana Superman. So I was Cody O'Neill, and then uh, I was Cody O'Neill for probably five six months, and then uh, added the moniker the Santana Superman. Um, and then when Corey came aboard, naturally, I mean, you got to have the Santan He Man. Um, you know, yeah. yeah you're gonna yeah. be. If you're gonna have the suntan Superman, you gotta have the suntan He Man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was just kind of interesting because I'm like the suntan Superman. <laughs> mm. Yeah, suntan Superman. yeah. Stolen for Ron Killings, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Jesse, I'll let you go. All right. So Cody has your son. Uh, Talk to you about maybe going pro at one point? No, not at all. He thinks dad's a doofus. He's embarrassed of dad. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's no interest in professional wrestling at all. Oh, okay. We lost. Uh, oh, we're back again. Uh, he used to play with professional wrestler, you know, the wrestling dolls and stuff like that. Um, but. No, he's man. He, he gets straight A's in school. He um, he uh, he doesn't have to uh, be a showman or uh, or make up uh, for lack of brain power uh, with charisma. Successful. Um, he was an architect, so um, he, he can pretty much do whatever he wants because he's a four O student, so. <laughs> He's a smart kid, guys. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm spoil, spoil, spoil rotten with my, uh, with my uh, kiddo. He's a, he's a good kid. So nothing like yeah. it was. I was always in trouble in school and, and uh, yep, yeah. trouble found me all the time. And not him. He's a good kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah keep, uh, keeping good grades in school is always good, and no matter, no matter what. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Someday college yep. and all that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, so, you have a few tattoos, and I was just wondering uh, talk about your inspirations for that. Um, I have, I've, I've got kanji down, uh, down the backsides of both my arms. Um, it's, uh, it, it's just kanji writing for. Uh, that reminds me of um, just different things that happened in life, and and uh, that I've got another kanji on right uh, right deltoid um, that's for my mom. I lost my mom when she was forty three, um, so we, my brother and I, and and my sister, and actually Aaron. If you see Aaron, um, he's got a kanji symbol on his right deltoid as well. Um, that. Uh, that uh, is for my mother too. So um, Aaron's been always real tight with uh, my whole family. So um, Harley, it's, it's funny. He was just the adopted Harley. brother, Harley, but Charles. yeah. Um, what else do I got? I've got uh, the dumbest tattoo I ever got was the no, one in between the place that says Harley. insane. I got that after, um, after the uh, ultra violent match that we did when me and Eric Cannon aimed with Nick Mondo. Um, against uh, Shifty Shimdog and and uh, Joey Envy, uh, where we did the light tube match and stuff like that. So, uh, dumb tattoo. I've been uh, looking to get it covered up ever since. So, uh, but other than that, I got you know um, the my first tattoo, which is a, a kanji symbol for strength on my left deltoid. Um, I got that down at Fort Benning, Georgia, uh, after I graduated boot camp. So that's. Uh, I'm pretty proud of that one. I've got my son's uh, footprints um, around my calf um, that came off his birth certificate. Um, I would uh, not get rid of that one. Um, and then I've got I've got his name uh, in a band around my right bicep. Um, yep. Other than that, I mean, yeah. If you count them separately, I think there's 17. Uh, but yeah. 
You know, I, I, unfortunately, I grew up when uh, tattoos started getting real popular to get all of that tribal tribal junk, and I uh, jumped on the yeah. bandwagon. And just once you get one, you get you get sixteen more. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, I kind of remember our. Going back, I think I've heard some stuff on like the whole tribal chat and the uh, the symbols and all that. I'm like, oh no, it was popular, <laughs> man. For like for like 10, 10 years, it was huge. So um, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, tattoos are always a cool thing to have. It's just uh, yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, it's not visible for you, but I mean. Uh, when it's on you, it's good, but like just make sure you don't get too many or anything you re uh, regret or anything. But uh, in the end, it's uh, exactly. cool. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, what is the most difficult move to perform? Uh, the two man Spanish fly. Oh, yeah. So my brother, my yeah, my brother and I are. I I came up with a single fly. I didn't come up with it. Let's let's let me correct myself. <laughs> I started using the single band Spanish fly uh, as a finisher uh, before my brother got in the biz, and then uh, naturally when he got in the biz, I mean he he could do flips too. So we just added him on the end um, and put 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 our opponent in the middle and start to do the tag team Spanish fly, but that takes a lot, a lot of uh, uh, balance and, and guts to stand up on the top rope a turnbuckle with three guys, man. So um, other than that, I would say uh, my, uh, the double jump moonsault that I did where I would spring, spring off the second rope to the top rope and do a moonsault um, that took some, uh, some decent timing. I stole that move from Christopher Daniels. I think he called that fall from grace, maybe. Oh, okay. But I, I named it. I named it the. Uh, I named my version Ichiban Moonsault after um, his Japanese character, because um, he would always say, um, "See, it's uh, he's Ichiban um, when he was over in Japan when he was wearing the hood when he was doing that mask gimmick." So that's why I named it the Ichiban Moonsault, though. Oh, okay. Oh, are so you talking each, about, each, go ahead. Are you talking about just like a, a, a moon cell from the a top rope, just kind of thing? Um, yeah, well, I, well, I would spring <laughs> off the second up to the top and then and then do it. So, oh, okay, yeah, that was taken. I thought it's like that was, a double jump moon cell. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah, because I was thinking it was his finisher, the, the BME, but then I was like. If it's a double thing, then that's probably falling. Uh, no, thing. it is. Yep, BME, best moon salt ever. Yep, that's what we call that. It. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. Yep. All right. All right, Jesse. I'll let you go. All right. So I know that you're working in the grocery business now. I think it's high V, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Funny, funny you bring that up. You guys uh, jump on any of uh, uh, the high Facebook pages for the state of Minnesota, you will see me tonight. I did a, I did a, a promo for a uh, gimmick we got tomorrow, uh, BOGO 18 Count Donut Holes. I did a commercial uh, spot for hy V, and they posted it uh, tonight probably probably an hour ago on all of the state's uh, Facebook pages. Maybe. So if you guys look that up, you'll see my uh, my ugly face on there cutting a promo. Mm. <laughs> the donuts. On mm -hmm. a, a donut. Cody went from cutting promos in the wrestling, now he's cutting them in high V. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the thing, man. Like, like all all of the all of the guys give me a give me a hard time that my promos weren't that good in the business. Uh, they, they're wondering why I couldn't cut a promo in the business, and now I got good promos uh, working for uh, High V. But uh, yeah, I have fun doing what I'm doing, man. I I have fun, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, it makes High V a lot cooler now. Now that they have promos going on, so. Yeah, yeah. You just gotta follow, follow me on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, yeah uh, 
Cub Foods doesn't do that. So. Oh, wow, oh, Cub Foods. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> mad now. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cub Foods gets angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you guys want to hear a funny story about uh, about Corbin and I? We were uh, warming up for in Lonsdale. We we did shows for uh, Johnson ran uh, Northern Premier Wrestling. We were um, warming up. Um, we actually doing a uh, uh, photo shoot for a news local newspaper up there who was running a story on my brother and I. Either way, we were doing a photo shoot, and they were like, hey, can we get uh, some pictures of you guys warming up in the ring? And and uh, Corey and I were warming up. We were like, yeah, sure, that's awesome. So uh, uh, I'm like, hey, Aaron, let me let me hit you with the top and uh, just for the for the photo. And Aaron didn't like taking – there was – usually I would get him with one good one, and then he would tell me in, during the match, done, no more chops. Because I, mm-hmm. I threw pretty good chops. So I put him in the corner, throw a chop – and it was the best shop I have ever mm. <laughs> immediately started bleeding. And the boys in the back were like, came out out of the curtain. They were like, what the hell was that? Because the pop was so loud off of his mm. chest. Uh, mm. Man, the photographer was just looked at me like, oh, my <laughs> God, you just killed him. He just um, <laughs> so that was pretty funny. Yeah, there was like Mitch Paradise was at that show. Um yeah, there was a bunch of guys at that show that come out and they were like, "What the hell just no. happened?" It was, uh, it sounded like a gunshot went off. No. <laughs> Fine stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I think yeah, I've kind of been in. I've uh, I've seen chops, and uh, I mean, there are some pretty good chops, but uh, uh, the one night that the chops were like insane was uh. Uh, for Time Bomb Wrestling, I watched uh, Time Bomb Wrestling champion Dominic Garini versus Minoru Suzuki. And Suzuki's yeah, chops. I'm, cut, are... I'm cutting out real bad. Oh, no. Oh, wait, can you hear me? Are you good now? Cutting out really bad. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I think I'm good now. I can hear you. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, so a few months ago in October, I got to see uh, T- Dominic Garini versus Minoru Suzuki, and Suzuki's chops are like insane. Those those things are bam. I'm like, oh my god. He got into the crowd and he was like inches away. I'm like, that is yeah. how to get chopped like that. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Suzuki. That's definitely- absolutely sick. Yeah. So that's Air Air, Air Canada and I were were uh, re- really into chopping. So he still is. Um, and I always was too. Yeah, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, watching watching uh, Kenna Kabashi and Misawa, um, guys like that throw at each other in, in Noah. That was, I mean, God, those are good matches. Those guys are so good. That's mm-hmm. Strong Style. If you don't watch Strong Style, you're missing out. You know, watching mm-hmm. Strong Style is such a mm-hmm. It's like watching an MMA match, man. It's a, it's best match. Those guys are so good at what they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, you guys still following me? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've seen uh or heard uh, Eric Cannon. Uh, I've heard Eric Cannon's uh, chops before, and it, those are pretty loud too. He uh, took Damon Spriggle to school that night in Time Bomb T. So, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, I think last time we were talking about some injuries, but uh, what were some close moments of almost getting an injury? Um, let me think. I don't think I ever like whenever we talked about last time. You know the the concussions and stuff like that. Um, other than that, man, like um, the one time that I was super scared that I was going to get hurt was um, we did a cage match at, MP- at the MPW arena. I think the cage was eight, 18, 17, 18 feet high, and I did a moonsault off the top of it to the inside onto nobody, just onto the mat. No one oh. caught me. Um, I, was, uh, I was worried. I was worried. worried I was going to come away with something, uh, something pretty bad off that, and nothing happened, man. I landed perfect. Um, it was great. 
It was great. Other than that, just concussions. Uh, split my head open once. Uh, got staples. Um, broke my nose. Uh, but other than that, like, I'm lucky, man. I'm lucky I got out of the business and did breaking thing or uh, didn't do anything severe while I was in the room. Uh, speaking of that, um, in my neck, and that's probably from the business. I can't imagine it's from anything else. Um, so I'm going to see a doctor next uh, next Thursday for that. So that, that's exciting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, make sure you're all uh, um, what's the word. Uh, yeah, make sure you get your uh, checkups and everything because yeah, makes wrestling can uh, leave you with permanent stuff, and I think you're too young to be be uh, in, uh, in pain yet. So even though from wrestling, it's already kind of like that, but yeah. You know. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right, Jesse, I'll you go with the question. Yeah, just give me one minute. I'll be right back with you guys. Oh, okay. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Uh, what uh, else we got? Uh, um, what are your uh, who are your favorite uh, superstars to, or uh, wrestlers to work with besides Canon? I guess. Um, guys that I've worked with uh, that are. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. No, oh, we're cutting out. Oh. Uh, All right, we're back. Okay. Got, guys, guys were my favorites to work with. Yeah, yeah. Um, Eric Cannon, um, John Johnson, um, my brother. Oh, kid, crazy Joey Andy. Um, yeah, who else? Chris Jordan, um, Austin and Aries. Um, oh, oh, yeah. uh, technical difficulties. All right, we're back. Can you hear okay. me now? Yeah, yep. All right. <laughs> All right, so we left off at uh, at uh, to naming guys off. Uh, mm-hmm. Black Stallion, God, he was you, – you are a phenomenal talent, that guy. There were so many things he didn't do because he didn't need to do them in the ring um, that I, I I honestly think that uh, that guy – that guy was Shelton Benjamin before Shelton Benjamin came on the scene. Um, oh, yeah, so yeah. when I went into the business and when I went and trained in, at MPW at the camp, um, Black was there training, and uh, I watched him do a shooting star press first shooting star press I've ever seen live. I watched him do a shooting star press into one of the uh, into the pro pits that they had there, um, off the top rope, just hooked. I was like, wow, this guy's amazing. Um, so mm-hmm. um, he took he took a couple of us under his wing and, and uh, didn't have to you know it's just a couple of green guys uh, but he took us under his wing and and uh, showed us a whole lot about the business man like I learned a ton from that guy um, I'm forever in debt to him uh, taking me under his wing and, and taking care of me um, I would have never uh, gone gone uh, gained popularity so quick if it wasn't for him. So, mm-hmm. um, but he was an amazing talent and he was fun to work too. Um, I think I only worked him in a single match. I think him and I only had one singles match. Uh, bad. I was excited for it and, uh, it turned out pretty good. So, um, other than that, um, who else did I work? Oh yeah. Ryan Cruz and, and Derek. Oh, yeah. Tom. Oh. And any other guys, um, but yeah, like I was spoiled rotten, man. Those the APW crew back in the day, um, even even the guys who were were not very good, were pretty darn good. We didn't even realize it until we start working outside of MPW and you start working guys from uh, from uh, Iowa sometimes that 
Mm, uh, probably should have been in training camp a couple of months longer. And same with Wisconsin. I worked some worked some guys from Wisconsin. Mm, terrible. Um, yeah. But Minnesota's got good wrestlers, man. Uh, for the most mm-hmm. part, uh, Minnesota guys are top notch. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Justin, you were talking what about else we guys? favorite wrestlers to work with. So. Yeah. Yeah. X, uh, X, yeah, I'll go with the uh, watch another uh, segment that I got up here. Uh, I'm going to share the screen. We were talking about this earlier, but I just wanted to get your like play by play thoughts if you had any about this. Uh, Sure, I love to talk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So this was, uh, oh, can I get subtitles? Oh, maybe I have to. Yeah, because this was your speech from uh, First Wrestling. Uh, Eric Cannon, or you guys had a match, and Eric Cannon pretty much gave you the floor on this. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts about this. Yeah, what, what a cool place to say goodbye at. I should have, you know, hindsight being 2020, um, God, I, I, you know, um, this, this was such a cool match. Um, and Eric Canada didn't need to do this for me, and he did. Um, pretty cool. Pretty cool to say goodbye um, to first half uh, when, um, when Jerry Lynn and Xbox worked the same night, you know. So um, mm-hmm. it was uh, – it was fun, man. Like as 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 much uh, as much credit as Eric Cannon gives to me here, and and uh, has positive things to say to me. Like he uh, mm-hmm. trained me and helped give me the gift, and and uh, man, like we uh, had fun. That was a good match too. That six man tag that we had. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that was a great match. And then at the end of this match, someone's so you can you can help here, I think someone yell from the crowd um, something about uh, coming back or something like that. And I said everyone has a price. And then I put the <laughs> mic down, but uh, little little did I know that that uh, no truer words have been spoken. I uh, I came back to the business probably I think a year, year and a half after that with the new chief, you know. Had a run with the yeah, that was it. There's that tall, goofy redhead that we've run with. <laughs> I, know. I don't know. Uh, Corbin showed up for first wrestling at all, so this is kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think we're talking, talking about um, road trip to ACW and, and mm-hmm. uh, stuff like that. If you guys never heard of ACW, ACW was uh was a pretty big company, was the company over in Wisconsin. Um, and uh, I was lucky enough to get to go over there and work work for for a while and uh, you know, uh, meet John Johnson, Eric Corbin. We, uh, you know, we all traveled over there and road trip to over there uh, probably once once a month, once every five weeks. Um, good memories with those guys, man. That's, you know, when, when they talk about brotherhood, uh, that that's you know that's good friendships back then. So, um, back then, man. Mm. Yeah, you got a whole like chant, uh, Cody chant at the end too. That's pretty awesome. The awesome feeling I'm guessing. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. I just wanted to get play by play on that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep, I didn't even know that was on YouTube. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think I was just scrolling through. I just searched like Cody Neal and stuff, and uh, it's on the Proby Sheen YouTube channel. It says, "A uh, longtime and indie wrestler Cody O'Neill retired on June nineteenth, two thousand nine, at First Wrestling in Minneapolis." So, yeah, I just kind of found it randomly. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Cool. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool that it's like a fan footage too. So it's, uh, I mean, commentary is always good, but that like fan footage of a memorable moment is always cool. So, yeah, 
Right, right. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, Jesse, I'll you go with the question. All right. So, Cody, uh, walk us through the day of your last match. What what was it like for you? And were did you have butterflies or were you nervous at all? I generally never got nervous. Um, if I, if I was nervous, it was uh, I remember specifically being nervous uh, working Aries that first time at the night that I met my wife. Um, that that night I I had butterflies because I knew how much that match would mean to my career going forward if um, if I didn't mess up. I didn't mess up and it uh, it. Uh, put a rocket in my uh, rear end and shot me to the moon uh, as far as in the Minnesota Indies. It got me, got me a lot of attention. Um, But as far as uh, the last match, um, living in in now, uh, you know, um, I probably went tanning that morning because that's what I do. Um, (laughs) And uh, I think Aaron uh, Aaron Corbin, and my brother picked me up. Both live in Albert Lee. They picked me up on the way up to Elk River, um, and uh, we did what we do in, in car rides and probably BS and and um, made fun of each other and both did it all the way up and uh, got to the building. Um, you know, I think um, I would. Uh, I, I'm trying to think. Tony did. I think Tony did autograph. You know, we wouldn't have uh, did autographs or meet and greets before then, so it was probably warm up in the ring. Uh, nope, it was warm up in the ring. I came came uh, came in. We uh, rolled our bags down to the down to the locker room. Um, got some shorts on, put boots on in the ring, and stretched out, and we're rolling around and uh, just get warmed up. And uh, Ari Vare walked up up uh, up up to the ring, and I remember talking. To can and we're traveling uh together at the time so uh talking to them and rolling around and uh kind of shooting the shit with them and you know Arya's like oh you, you, you I, I you still got it i bet and i'm like oh, i don't think so so i was uh open that and uh who were able to uh going to be able to carry my brother and i um, and they did. They did an absolutely fantastic job. Um, Jay Soltis, who was the referee in that match, like, uh, God, I can't be more thankful for him. Um, he was – he's an awesome ref, best, best, best in the business. Him and Rob Page, best in the business uh, as far as refs go. Uh, back down to the locker room, um, and uh, Art Navari was actually chanting, you still got it. Uh, when I walked into the locker room, so that was that's a pretty cool memory. Um, he's a pretty cool dude. Uh, him and his brother, I got I had more exposure with his brother Sean Davari, um, who uh broke into the business a little bit before about a year before me. He was in, um, and um, yeah, so I got to uh, got a ton of shows with Sean Davari, be on a ton of shows with Ari Davari. Um, both great guys, both super guys. Nothing but positive things to say about both those guys. Uh, but yeah, that was it, you know, other than I didn't really get nervous going out in front of a crowd. Um, the most nervous I ever was was at CZW, um, standing behind that curtain, listening to my music hit. Um, just, you know, you work in the business, you start watching ECW from ECW Arena and I mean, that's the pinnacle, man. Like, for an indie guy, that's Madison Square Garden for an indie guy. Um, so, mm-hmm. And up until that point, I don't think I worked in front of that many people. You know, it was a small house because it was a Sunday show, I believe. Um, but there were still 12, 1,300 people there. For And for a Minnesota guy who's used to working for three, 300 people and being cool with that, um, that's a lot of people, man. So... Mm-hmm. And and a ruthless uh, ruthless crowd, you know they don't they don't mm. care about your feelings. <laughs> They're not Minnesota Knights out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, but that was probably the most most nervous I've ever been was that match. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
right. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, definitely different crowds are always different. And it, I think it would, uh, I, well, I've already experienced like uh, North Dakota wrestling already, but I think, I think it would be kind of cool to see like a, a super rowdy show one time and see how that environment plays out with the, the mm -hmm. crowd and the talent. So, and you had the wrestle mm -hmm. in front of that. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Fun stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad they like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, did you have uh, many conversations or, else, uh, or any conversation with uh, Austin Aries? But well, besides working with him, or um, well, whenever we were on shows, we would, you know, small talk. Um, but outside of his circle, like he wasn't, he was kind of quiet outside, you know, outside of his circle. You know, he was friends with um, uh, Tommy Don, uh, Joey Envy was in that crew. Uh, who else? Uh, Lacey and Rain, if you guys remember those two gals, be huge. He was in that group. Um, you know, and then Aries, Dan was in that group too. So, um, but I, you know, Aries had this, uh, this stigma about him. Um, when he was on shows, it was just like being on a show. You know, he was just, he was larger than that show. Even though Aries was like five, five, six, five, seven, maybe five, eight. Uh, he's been at five, eight, but. But mm -hmm. he still seemed large. That's what it takes to be that that next level superstar and to carry a world heavyweight title like he did, especially being maybe two oh five, maybe two oh five. Um the yeah, tremendous talent. Um uh, but even somewhat just calm, reserved. He was just chill, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wasn't an asshole or anything. He was just he just kept to himself. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know some uh well obviously yeah, everyone there's many people like that and uh I think Aries that sounds about right from what I've seen in his podcast and such and yeah. Uh all right. Uh Jesse, I'll let you go with the question. Yeah. So um what do you think the biggest problem in professional wrestling is today? Hmm. Oversaturation. I mean, there's there's guys that there's guys that I see wrestling, and and I was probably one of them um, for for a bunch of different guys. Uh, there's guys that I see wrestling that have no business being in the business. Uh, just because you like wrestling doesn't mean you can be a wrestler. Just because you want to be a wrestler doesn't mean you can be a wrestler. Um, you know, it, it just it, it's. It's got to be more, more unique, more pristine. It can't be, you know, it's so attainable to, so attainable to every everybody. That's all right. Uh, it's so attainable to everybody now that you see every Joe Schmo that mm. that has three thousand dollars to get trained, um, get trained, um, and that maybe maybe makes me sound like an a hole, but um, I'm just trying to protect the uh, the business. You know what I mean? So, and right. honestly, man, I had no, I had no business being in in the wrestling business. I was five foot four, not even one hundred and ninety pounds. There, I, I, you know, I lift weight, lifted weights, um, and uh, and that, but and did cardio, but I didn't eat right, you know, obviously. Um, but that's the biggest problem. If if you if you wanna, uh, if you wanna be in business, then you know, care about the business enough to lift. Uh, eat right and look the part. Um, you know, the, but the thing with me is if, you know, if Joe Schmo in the audience messed with me, um, you know, I was, I knew how to defend myself. There's, there's a lot of guys in the business right now that, um, that, you know, 15 kid could, could, could take out, you know, um, and that that's, it's just, it ruins the legitimacy of the business. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is one of the I guess the hard truths about wrestling is that you got to make sure your character stands out and that you're, uh, uh, yeah, you look the part. So, yeah. Yep, you can't look the next part. You really can't look like the next. Mm -hmm. 
there. You know, if you if you walk into a, a gymnasium and uh, people don't turn to look at and uh, you know notice your uniqueness, they probably have no business being on that show. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Oh. Let's see. I think I pretty much went through all my questions. And well, actually, uh. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we were uh talking about uh family life. So what is uh what is uh family life been for uh Cody O'Neill, uh former wrestler? I absolutely love it, man. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm I'm spoiled rotten when it comes to being married to, to the best woman in the world. Um, she takes care of me. Um, she deals with all of my uh, my uh, arrogance and uh, and takes it with a grain of salt and and still loves me um, unconditionally. So um, I'm spoiled with with a 15 year old kid that uh, that pulls good grades. Um, he's got a big brain in his head and. Uh, doesn't look a darn thing like his dad, so it's not going to be hard to marry him <laughs> off. So, mm. um, yeah. uh, I'm, I have fun, man. I have, I have, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm married to my best friend. She's uh, my wife, Jackie's great. Um, mm -hmm. uh, lots of fun. Uh, and, uh, um, uh oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, two two min pin chihuahua mixes. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, one one was uh, we've had since she was I think six weeks, and then we our male dog uh, we adopted him from a humane society and and actually saved him. So um, yeah, other than that, man, man, we I I have fun. I have just as much fun living a day to day life. Um, same amount of fun that I did in the wrestling ring. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is what you make of it, man. Like, um, if, if you're miserable in life, it's generally your own fault. You know, you got to control it, control the cards that are dealt to you. And you can certainly do that in the game of life. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad I walked away from the business when I did, uh, because I, I'm, I'm sore every single morning from, and it's from wrestling. Um, a little mm -hmm. bit of high school wrestling and, and a lot bit of uh, professional wrestling is is what tore down my body. Um, but um, it's uh, it's odd that we're three years away from or two and a half years away from graduating a, um, our kid. That it's odd going to be an empty nester, man. Um, I don't think it, it doesn't feel like I'm old enough to be an empty nester, but um, mm -hmm. but it'll be fun. It'll be fun, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. What else you guys got? Um, would... So if uh, you and Aaron Aaron Corbin can do one last match <laughs> with his tag team partner, Darren, and your brother, who do you think would win that tag team match? Wow. <laughs> I mean, the tougher guys are going to prevail, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Us yeah. little guys would just would dance all over those uh, those redheaded brothers. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Uh, yeah, that definitely would be a cool match to see in the year of uh, 2022 again. To uh, re well, it's, uh, recreate the past with uh, one more tag team of the O'Neills and the Corbins. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you still? I'm not sure if we did talk about this before, but do you still? Do you keep up with any uh, specific talent in Minnesota anymore? Or? Um, I really don't. I like I I I catch catch it going through uh, social media, like the kids that work for AW um, and that. There's a there's a kid that. Um, Oh, he's an amateur wrestler out of South St. Paul. I can't remember. Brandon, Brandon Gore. Is oh, that one of yeah. them? Yeah. Um, I, I've seen a couple of matches of his, and I've been absolutely amazed by him. Um, he's a great talent. Um, 
Um, but the Airwolf and uh, and his brother, I've seen that they're on AEW, which is awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Doesn't surprise me. Minnesota puts out great, great talent, man. Um, mm-hmm. It's a uh, it's a hot spot for uh, for talented athletes, uh, professional wrestlers uh, exclusively. I mean, there's so many guys in the, that that uh, deserve a shot um, that never got one um, just because they weren't cut up. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes having six pack abs and uh, and uh, chest muscles and and you know being two ten two teen is uh, that's that's playing the part you know so um, but I think uh, you know you could take sixty percent fifty percent of the guys out of Minnesota and uh, put them in with any top talent and they they'd have a great match. So with anybody on, on TV. So. Yeah. 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 Like you said, uh, Brandon Gore, he's definitely gotten to the ranks now. And uh, I've seen, I've, I've pretty much seen him since his uh, rookie year in 2017, first come out of the Academy for steel domain wrestling and Richfield, Minnesota. And he's been doing all these shows doing pro wrestling battleground and first, and now he's doing dark matches with, AEW, and I think the last time I heard, I think he was training at the, cool. the, the Cody Rhodes the Nightmare Academy. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah, no, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't follow. I'm the I'm the old guy, but um, yeah. that's good. Like uh, like I said, I've seen a couple of matches of his, and and uh, he seemed like a pretty damn good talent. So, well well deserved. So, I'm mm-hmm. partial to uh, to amateur wrestlers anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's probably, I would say, the best uh, amateur wrestler currently in Minnesota. So, yeah, mm-hmm. in, the, in the pro wrestling world, so, or amateur to pro. So, yeah. Uh, all right, Jesse, I'll let you, go, let you go. All right, one more question for you. Yeah. Okay, in an amateur match, who would win between Shelton Benjamin and Brock Lesnar? Hmm. Who would win? Yeah, is that what we said? Yep. <laughs> Brock. Are, are we talking in a uh, <laughs> in a amateur match? Are we talking yep, in, in the one amateur of the match? match? Yeah, Brock. Brock amateur. would, and I, I guarantee, I guarantee you, Sheldon would probably admit the same thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, I mean, both both are ext- extremely uh, phenomenal uh, athletes, but Brock's. Uh, Class all to himself. Even even Gable Stevenson coming. Um, no. Uh, too much glitching, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Brock Brock would Brock would even beat Gable. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah. yeah. I definitely agree with that one, one hundred and ten percent. Yeah, yeah. I wish uh, Shelton was used uh, a lot better in WWE. Now he he just pretty much does jobber matches at this point, and the whole Cedric Alexander tag team and former uh, uh, Hurt business thing is just not working anymore. So I wish, hope he gets better treatment or leaves and goes to the Indies or something. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, yeah. It's, well, we got an hour and thirteen minutes. So <laughs> it's pretty good. Look at that. Setting records tonight. It's like five minutes. Nah, it was like five <laughs> minutes, guys. That's all it felt like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. We want to thank you for being on the show again. You're our only, or so far, your only uh, returning guest on the show. So. <laughs> Small He'll history. be back. Awesome. Two times, two times. Yeah, you guys have me back anytime. You guys shoot me a text or whatever and let me know. Uh, we can we can bullshit about whatever you want. Even if you uh, – I'll be watching WrestleMania, so if you guys want to follow up uh, that following week and, yeah. and uh, chat about WrestleMania, we can always do that too. Um, I did mention the podcast to Johnson, so if you guys want to have like a – uh, like a, a four four guy uh, uh, podcast, we can do that too. Um, just let me know. Yeah. Shoot me a text. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah. 
right. Yeah. All right. Well, you have a nice night, Cody. Yeah. All right. I guess we can end this. <laughs> Should we? Or, uh, mm. All right. Let's wait for him to say goodbye quick, and then we'll cut it. All right. I think he's... Uh, Dang it. Mm. Uh, oh. <laughs> mm. This is where I wish we could edit a live video. <laughs> oh. I know, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Well, All at right. least it, at yeah. least there wasn't. No crackling or nothing tonight. I mean, a few glitches here and there, but I mean, 